All right, guys, we are live, and we're streaming from Facebook, from YouTube, and from Twitter today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here in just a moment, but I want to pull up the chat here so that I can interact with you guys in case you have any questions or you have any comments or anything like that. Okay. Here we go. Just get the chat open here. Okay. And we are ready. All right. So I was looking at this and I was trying to think about it and figure out where I needed to go next. And the eyes are starting to bother me a little bit. So I want to go back over to the eyes. I never feel like I'm very far away from the drawing process, no matter how far I get into it, um, until I get to some of the final details. But I'm still early enough in the drawing process where I can change some things if I want to. So I want to look at these eyes and make a few corrections here as I see them. And the orientation of my reference to the way I laid this out on my drawing surface is slightly different. The perspective is just a little bit different. And I, I have to keep that in mind as I try to draw little details. So I want to make sure that I'm looking at where everything is in relationship to um, the uh, other features. So I want to, I don't want to uh, get something out of skew, something, um, you know, I'll create this twisting kind of effect if I do that. So I got to be careful about that. Okay. I think if I go right in here, Start working on some of the dark areas first, and then I'll come back in with the lighter areas. Hey, Carla, Happy New Year. Good to see you over here. Awesome. Um, so Carla is someone I know in real life um, and not just online. So I'm always excited when somebody joins that I actually know um, on a personal level uh, in real life. She's been a student for um, a long time now, huh, Carla? Probably over a year, I think. Something like that, or close to it. Okay, let's go over here. There we go. And I don't really care what the color is that I'm using right now doesn't matter as much as uh, just the tone of the pencil. And so I picked a darker reddish tone. This, I think this one's red-violet, yeah. Um, so that matters less to me right now at this point than uh, that it's a darker color. That's all. Because I need to establish some darker areas first. So I can kind of redraw this a little bit. And then I can come back in there and shift the color back in the area that I want it to be in because I can use other colored pencils, other colors, add those to my palette. Um, and this color that I chose is not far uh, outside of the color scheme that I already have, that I've already established. Looks like I need a little, little more light over here. I don't want to cause a reflection, though. I hope that's okay. That That's probably fine. There we go. So where this, where this area comes up over here, I need to refine that just a little bit. I know some people get really bothered by um, redrawing structural things um, later in the process. It doesn't bother me. 
Um, I think if you're just beginning and you're very early and new to the process of uh, drawing, especially portraits, uh, then you shouldn't do that. You should only think about the structure first and not go back and forth um, because it can get a little confusing when you start to do that. Yeah, so um, a question over there from K.R. Campbell uh, watching on YouTube live. Um, yes, so if you go back and you look at the live videos that I've done, I started this one and I have only drawn on this one live. So I think I started back in June. So thanks for the comment and question. You can go back to June, probably. You're looking for the the beginning of this portrait, and that's where you would find that. Um, the beginning stages of working on this portrait started back, I think, June or July, something like that. And uh, I had to put it away, uh, put it off for a little bit, that is, um, K.R. Campbell, um, in... Uh, September, uh, July, September, October, that area, and had sort of a, a personal upset going on uh, that affected my business, and uh, I, I just now came back to it uh, a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago maybe. So you'll see the earlier videos, and then that I uh, didn't work on it for a while, and now I'm back working on it again. So my intention is to finish this, uh, not today, but finish it live on um, each Monday morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, um, K.R. Campbell. So, appreciate you being here. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, my intention is to finish this live. Typically, I do this on Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when uh, I'm drawing this portrait live. That's when I'll be doing live streams each Monday. Uh, today, the reason why I switched it today, I had every intention of doing this uh, yesterday. Uh, I woke up in the middle of the night with a what I would call a migraine. Um, for those that don't know what cluster headaches are, they're just like a migraine. And I wasn't even sure if... I, w I thought maybe I was coming down with the flu or something. It was that awful. Uh, and it lasted all day. And it's starting to feel better this morning. Uh, even Sometimes this happens where even medicine doesn't uh, affect it too much. But it did. It just took a long time. And I had to uh, just grin and bear it. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. It's just not fun. Uh, okay, let's go in this direction. Used to, when I had a day job and I, I worked in IT, uh, there was a while there that I reported uh, to a boss who uh, told me they had never, they had never had a headache, not a bad headache, you know, never had a headache. So <laughs> I was like... Okay, I cannot even, um, I, I don't know how to explain it to you then. <laughs> uh, most of the time I would just show up as a zombie and uh, pretend like everything was okay. Uh, but most of the time when those hit really bad, there, if you have migraines, you know what I'm talking about. There's no pretending. You can't work. You can't do anything. So I didn't, I wouldn't go into work. I couldn't. Um, but anyway, I'm just wondering if, Sorry for this long sidebar, but I'm just wondering if my uh, my medicine uh, is not working like it should now. I, I don't know. It doesn't seem as effective um, for whatever reason. Reason. So I don't know. It's weird. Okay, for some reason I got down there on the nose. I just wanted to make sure that the perspective was right over there. Okay, I need to get back up here. Hi, got a question over there on um, YouTube Live. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. You said, hi, is this P400? Yeah. 
Not sure what, what you're asking, uh, to be honest. P400, um, this is, uh, maybe you're asking if this is Fisher 400, I'm not sure, but this is UART, uh, 600 grit is what this is. So, Lisa over on Facebook says, a joy to view. Thank you, Lisa, appreciate it. Okay, let me go in here. Um, okay, so the same, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Um, same person over there on YouTube is asking or saying it's very good paper, but I feel it doesn't hold the pastel dust. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I'm not using pastels. I'm using colored pencil. So wax and oil-based colored pencils. Um, professional grade pencils. So you might be right about that. Do you use colored pencils or do you use pastels? I'm just curious if maybe that's what what you use most of the time. If you're using pastels, uh, then yeah, you're gonna you're going to have more dust with those than you are with colored pencils. Colored pencils uh, stay put a little bit more. Typically, um, so you're asking which is the best grit, 600 or 400. Uh, I never use 400. Um, I used to never use 400. Uh, Fisher 400 uh, has a 400 grit, and I didn't really care for it as much as I did as I do UART. Um, okay, so you're using pastels, but I'm most of the time using 800 grit, but on this UART dark paper, um, I'm using 600. It seems like there's less tooth um, than on the beige color of uh, UART. So that's the reason why I switched over to using using the 600. Yes, pastel mat. I love pastel mat. Uh, K.R. Campbell is asking. Um, yes, I have used it. I love it. And it's great. Nick Edgar is asking if I like the Lux Archival paper. Yes, I think it's my new favorite paper, actually. Um, it's, it is, it's so nice, uh, and I can't wait to, to get more of it as well. But, yeah, I actually love it, Nick. Um, and, Nick, you did, didn't you do a portrait with uh, the Lux Archival? I, th I thought maybe that was you. I thought you did one, but I may be mistaken about that. I thought I saw it on Instagram. I might be wrong about that. I got to work on these these eyes, uh, just the perspective and the placement of all of these features and the elements around the eyes and the eyes themselves, the sclera is not quite right at this moment. So Nick, what's your thoughts? Do you do you love it? Yeah, yeah. So for those of you on Facebook, Nick is saying that paper is fantastic. That was my thought too. I thought it was really good. As thick as the, or as um, um, much of of the tooth, I mean, as thick of tooth as you have on it, I'm not sure how to say that. It's got a really heavy tooth. <laughs> I'll say it that way. Um, there's a lot of tooth on that paper, and so as much tooth as there is on that Lux Archival, I was shocked at how well it just held uh, the colored pencil on it instead of instead of just 
um, having it fall off of there. Yeah, I totally agree, uh, Nick. It holds the pigment really well. That needs to be brighter. This whole area needs to be brighter. be careful though about the way that that's creating some dimension and form you don't want it to you don't want it to get um, I don't want it to start looking like you know a uh, paint by number or something like that where I've got little segments and I always try to be careful about that where one portion of the feature sort of just flows into the other and is swallowed up um, by this long and slow transition. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it other than that. So the question is, uh, someone's asking over on YouTube Live, what is the difference between uh, colored pencils, oil and wax-based colored pencils, and chalk-based pastel pencils? They're extremely different. Um, the biggest difference is when you, when you take the medium of colored pencil and you put it alongside a pastel pencil and you just make a little swatch of it, if you blow on it, or use a air rocket, then uh, you can blow the pastel all away because it has no uh, binder that sticks the pigment together in the way that colored pencils do. So they're using wax to bind the pigment in a colored pencil or mostly oil. Uh, they all use wax, though, and they all use a little bit of oil. Uh, but it's just a way of describing it and of thinking about it. Um, and you're asking, can you go dark to light? You, you can't as easily as you can with pastel pencils, but with colored pencil on a rigid surface or a non-absorbent surface like pastel paper, you can. You can do that. And so that's one of the advantages of using a... a um, a rigid non-absorbent surface and to a certain extent you can also do that on pastel mat as well I know some have a hard time believing that but once you try it and do it you'll become a believer <laughs> it's possible so that's why I love those two surfaces especially I like sanded paper a lot and I like um, pastel paper, pastel mat. When we're talking about non-absorbent surfaces, those aren't the only um, surfaces that I enjoy and that I like. But those are really nice, and they're way up there in my list of favorites.
Carol Leather, how are you? Over there on YouTube. Good to see you over here. Uh, K.R. Campbell asking if, if there's a brand of pastel pencils that I like. Um, I'm, I don't use pastel pencils very often at all, so I can't really speak to that. I teach uh, colored pencil art, and so I'm teaching how to use wax and oil-based pencils, not pastel pencils. Uh, I have used them. I have sets of them, but there's not one that I could say... Uh, with much authority um, is my favorite or or uh, you know I just can't speak to that a whole lot and because uh, I'm not as experienced using the them good 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 to hear it Carol so I hope you guys are ready for the new year I'm ready for the new year I cannot wait Got a lot of exciting plans in this new year, and I'm just excited about it. Uh, I think it's it's just one of the best years to decide that you're going to change some things. Not that you have to do it at the beginning of a year. Uh, there's nothing that says you have to, but it's a beginning of a new decade as well. And so it just... Um, it's kind of logical and makes sense that you would naturally want to, um, you know, make changes in your life if you want to, you know, start something new, um, just do, do something different. You don't have to let the last decade define who you are in the new. You can change, you can course correct, and you can do things that, um, that you want to do, and I think it's exciting. This needs to be a lot darker over here. Now, I can get away with making the Scalera much darker. So, the question over there on YouTube Live, uh, may I ask what your interest in colored pencils, what is your interest in colored pencils compared to pastel pencils? Um, I always felt like with there's nothing against pastel pencils, but my experience when using pastels in general, whether they be in stick form or pastel form, is that you have to be so careful about protecting everything and making sure things don't fly away. I've heard of pastel artists who uh, will store their pastels um, that they've done, and then they come back and they have placed something uh, on top of their work in the wrong way or something like that, and all of a sudden they're losing some of the layers that they've put down. Uh, with colored pencil, you don't have to worry about that. Once you put it down there, it's pretty much set. It's not going to change, shift, blown off. It's not going to get dusted off. Um, so it's not that I'm against pastels at all. I love pastels. All right. Okay. Well, the one that asked the question is leaving now. So, all right. Thanks for thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Thanks for the questions too. All right. Maybe we'll convert them over to colored pencil. <laughs> That's not really my goal, um, but. Well, kind of is my goal. It's just so fun. I just think that uh, if if uh, an artist hasn't tried colored pencil uh, and they're using other mediums, they don't know what they're missing. I've heard um, some artists tell me that use oils. Uh, they paint in oils. Um They'll come to the medium, and uh, they're trying to learn colored pencil. And this happened in um, some of my workshops and live classes um, in person. And there's, they'll say, wow, I thought oils was hard, but colored pencils is really difficult. And then they'll stick around for a few more months, 
and they'll say, you know, colored pencils is really not that hard. I thought it was hard, but now I'm finding out it's not. <laughs> it's like, well, it can be as hard as you want it to be, uh, or it can be as simple and as easy uh, as you want it to be. <laughs> I think sometimes uh, we overcomplicate it, and we just make it more difficult than what it is. Um, and I've also had artists tell me that they've become better, a better painter uh, in acrylics or oils after having taken classes and learned more about colored pencil uh, because you're drawing, you're learning to draw. And, and so you're not getting uh, sidetracked with, you know, brush strokes and all these things related to painting, but you're focusing on what's primary, what is primary values, um, color palette, shifting uh, the, um, you know, all of these fundamental drawing skills, shifting the perspective and looking at, you know, like foreshortening and all these things that go along with good portraiture, if you're talking about a portrait, but even affect still life and everything else you may draw. Now, I'm having a hard time building up this pencil layer over here. Very hard time. I'm going to have to probably spray that. Or I could use a softer pencil in that area. Obviously, I burnished over there. And this is part of the problem with uh, a very thin tooth. You feel like, or I feel like that on 800 grit uh, pastel paper that I've got you know plenty of tooth. Well, this is 600, and I'm running out of tooth. And so there is a difference in the way that the beige UART uh, pastel paper is created in the way that this dark pastel paper is created. I should not be running out of tooth right now, but I am. So yeah, I'm going to have to do something different over there. So I'm going to have to just leave that for right now. There's no amount of just rubbing back and forth on that will make any difference, but I could try using one of my softer lead pencils, um, like the Derwent Drawing Pencil. Let me see what I got here. Bring out the soft guys. See what, see what we can use. Warm gray might work. Um, we got a pale cedar. That's too much green. This one looks nice. Smoke blue. That, I think, might look closer to what I'm going for. Let's see what happens. I don't know that it'll work, though. That's still too bright. That's brighter than what I wanted. Even though you may look at the reference and think that the Scalera over there on that side is bright, uh, I want it to be darker. Um, I think it'll look more convincing if it were darker. Now I'm losing my edge over there on that eyeball and the shape there. I want to make sure I maintain that shape. So I'm going to extend that a little bit. I gotta look at it and make sure. I gotta sharpen that. I wanna make sure that that, that edge creates the right angle to make that ellipse of the iris um, convincing. It needs to have the right angle on it. There we go. Okay, that's good enough for the moment. And I think, I think I may have gone a little bit brighter than what I wanted in that area. I can surround some of that highlight with a blue tint. 
and that will enhance that a little bit especially up here near the top and at the bottom I want a real hard edge on that bottom right there there we go what I've done to one I want to do to the other there we go I can always come back in there with brown and push those um, you know encroach upon that highlight right there okay that needs to be darker that needs to be brighter and this needs to be darker that pupil needs to be a little darker than what it is okay that should have gone down a little bit further I think there we go well, we had some good questions about pastel pencils <laughs> Yeah, I do do that, Nick. Nick's asking if I use spray. Yeah, I do spray occasionally. I'm not going to do it on a live stream, though. And I, I don't like chemicals all up in my face. I know that doesn't bother some artists, but I want to protect my lungs as long as possible. I've only got one set, and uh, I, I don't want all of that stuff going in my lungs. I don't care what a um, manufacturer says. <laughs> I um, if you look and s if you see what what um, a spray does to a paper, okay, imagine what it's doing to all those little membranes inside that organic material called your lung that is supposed to last you a lifetime. <laughs> no, thank you. <clears throat> Just my opinion. Okay, I can use this. This dark indigo right here. And that will shift that back in a darker direction. There we go. That's nice. You can even do that on the top over here where that iris, and I just have to be real careful over here, is where that iris moves away from our view. I can make that a little bit darker, but I don't want to use a lot of pressure over there, and I want to fade that away. So that single color fade, and move that back into the lighter area, like that. So I want to be careful and make sure that that iris, I'm sorry, that the pupil looks rounded. Oh, thank you, Carol. She's saying that she likes the soft highlights on the neck. I haven't spent a lot of time yet on the neck, but I, I do need to go back down there and refine some of that a little bit. If I don't work on the pupils and make sure that they at least look like an ellipse over here to mirror the uh, the lines of of the dimensional form of the uh, iris then if I don't do that, if I start just making a little block over here, I can start making her look like she has goat eyes, you know, having these uh, weird shapes in the, in the eyes. And so I don't want to do that. I want to make sure that this looks like um, a rounded pupil. Isn't it goats that have like the, the um, rectangle? I think it is. So I want to be careful about that. Okay. Let's come back up here. See, this gets really, really small right there. There's a real thin line right here between where that upper eyelid is and where the separation starts to take place for um, the, the uh, tear duct area. So... So how do I do that? Well, I got to look at also that upper eyelid. Is that interval right there, that distance right there, correct? Oh, Carol, what kind of you said that um, 
you don't dare do another port haven't dared to do another portrait um because you um created a hole in your paper last time uh what kind of paper were you using uh that probably you know made a difference right i'm sorry that happened but i think you should definitely attempt it again uh, because you know now not what you know what not to do you know what didn't work right that's the takeaway there right you can do this okay that's very very br my reference shows that this eyelid is very bright right there but i don't know that i want to draw that much attention to an eyelid right there I, you know I, I don't know I can always do that later on you were using Stonehenge Carol and you got a whole it's never happened to me did you use solvent or something I, I've never I've never seen that or heard of anyone having that problem um, did you use solvent and then maybe went over it while it was still um, wet you know, before it dried or something like that I don't know Wondering what happened there. I'm so sorry. That's that sounds like a nightmare. Okay. Want to get this pretty bright right in here. There we go. I'm interpreting that as being even brighter. I'm talking about the the eyelid underneath there. And I'm putting this white down as a little base coat. Try to erase with scotch tape, is what Carol is saying. She tried to erase with scotch tape. You ended up with a hole. Yeah, You're not talking about like completely through the... You're just talking about some fibers came up. You're not talking about a, an, an actual hole where you're passing through the paper to the other side, are you? I hope not. Okay. I think I, I need to go a little bit lighter, so I think I'm going to use this Venetian red right here. It's very warm. This area right here is very warm. And this is the underside of that eyelid where we can see some of the skin before we get to uh, the eyelashes. Okay. Put a little more warmth right in there and then push that back a little bit. There we go. I'm working on that angle right there. I need to blow that off to make sure I can see what is staying and what isn't. I pushed a little bit into the iris. There we go. That's better. And uh, I've got some... Eyelashes in here. That needs to be sharper. There we go. Uh, let's see. Need my sand block. A lot of times when I'm starting a portrait, I'm only using, you know, I'll just start using uh, all of my pencils that... Um, um, all of my lighter pencils uh, around the eyes, and I'll just focus on the eyes then as well. But then I don't want to ever put those too far away from me because, because I want to use those colors in other areas of the face as well. Oh, Carol, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Carol was saying that... Um, she can see through the paper. It went all the way through, apparently. And she didn't dare do any more pencil work, or it could have 
Well, uh, let's see here. You can see through the paper. It's not quite all the way through is what you're saying. Okay, so you didn't do any more uh, work over there because of that. You were afraid it was going to. Wow, never heard of that. I wonder what happened exactly. Like, it's really, really odd. Uh, okay, that that was not what I just did there. That was not good. That did not work. So I need to put a little lighter value in here. That's a little bit better. Okay, this is a little more red right in there. Up here. Yeah, sometimes if you just start with the eyes, then um, you've got all your values established right away if you start with the eyes because you have the darkest value, which is the pupil. You have the brightest value, which is either the highlight and or the sclera. Sometimes the sclera is not very bright, though. Uh, the white of the eye, that is. And, and then um, if you have a highlight on the upper eyelid, then then that you know establishes all of your lights your darks and your mid values and then you can progress through the portrait based on the work you've done over there carol that would be awesome if you can send me a scan of that that would be cool It'd be very good so it is just uh stonehenge paper by legion right make sure you you tell me about that because uh, it isn't that Stonehenge light or something like that. There is uh, something like that, I think. So I um, just want to make sure which one it is. Yeah, I've never heard of that happening. That's awful. I'm so sorry you had to deal with that. I was just hoping, you know, there's something we can learn about that, what happened. Um, I don't want anyone else to go through that. I don't want to go through that. <laughs> you don't either. <laughs> A little more eyelash. Got it in here. There we go. Yeah, we really got some stubborn areas up here. Making me look, making me draw funny. I tell you, it's kind of weird. I've got to really work at. Ah, oh, part of a big sheet of toned stone hinge. Okay, so uh, it was a large sheet. Uh, those uncut. Well, they're still cut, but um, the larger sheets, like they're like I don't know. 20 something inch or 40 inches in one direction. I don't know what the exact dimension is, but something like that. Um, wow. That's really, it's really odd. I think I would, uh, if I were you, I think what I would do, I, I do want to see that. If you want to send it to me, I would really appreciate that. Um, and Carol is part of the Sharpened Artist Academy, uh, I might add. And uh, so obviously, um, if you ever want any critiques, and I think you may have sent me uh, some of your drawings in the past, I don't recall offhand, but uh, what I would do, though, Carol, also, is I would email um, Legion and tell them your experience and show them uh, that uh, they would be interested in that as well. Um, they don't like, they don't want that to happen. Very cool. All right, Carol. Thanks. She's going to send it. It's just scary. It's a, like one of the things that you always fear might happen. You know, it's like, whoa, is this actually going to hold up? You know, <laughs> when you're working on cotton paper, that is, you know. So. This area gets really bright right in here. And I don't mind doing that right in here. I want to show that little plane where this, you know, this is catching the light quite a bit. There we go.
Now, somebody may be listening to what I said about I don't want to spray um, chemicals around whenever I'm um, working on my art. I don't want to spray them just willy-nilly, just anywhere and everywhere, and not pay attention to where they're going. I don't want that contaminating my lungs. And you may come away thinking, oh, he doesn't like sprays. But no, I do. They're a necessary evil, right? And I do use them. Um, I just use them in my garage. And I have a mask on. Uh, I've even thought about, you know, and I'm not opposed to using a respirator or something. <laughs> I, I, don't I just don't want that in my eyes. I use goggles and I use a mask and I hold my breath. Uh, and then I spray it, and uh, then I get out of there as quick as possible. Um, and I don't return for a long time. Uh, the better thing to do would be to suit up like that <laughs> and then to go outside and uh, to spray it so that all of that um, leaves the area, is blown away by the breeze. You know, uh, That's my take on it. Uh, I just I just don't want that in my lungs. I mean, it's just that that simple. And I'm perfectly fine if you disagree and you you want it in your you don't mind it in your lungs. That's fine. I'm just saying for me, I don't want it in my lungs. I don't know why I'm laughing about it. It's really not funny. I just <laughs> I just think I, I've seen. Um, I don't. I don't remember who. I don't know who. It was. Well, I wouldn't tell who it was anyway. But I saw a pastel artist um, talking about using a spray, and I, I was always interested in that because I always wondered how these pastel artists are trying to protect their work because um, it's a difficult thing to do. And I saw one on a video uh, using spray, and uh, it was this aerosol kind of spray, and it was just he was outside, and it was going everywhere and all up in his face and all that, and he had nothing on. Uh, he didn't have he didn't have anything on, um, so he's just breathing all that. I'm like wow, no, no, thank you. I don't know. To me, that was that was comical. So doesn't take much to make me laugh, I guess. Okay, I gotta look back at that eye. I'm really hyper focusing on this eye, aren't I? Yeah, I've got to do some. I've got to spray that or something, in order to get more pencil to be able to adhere. Um, there we go. I don't like the way that that eyelash is created up there. I need to work on that a little bit. This needs to be. A little bit brighter on that upper eyelid. I don't want it quite as bright as a reference, I don't think, but I want it brighter than what it is right now. Might have to switch over to a lighter pencil. Uh, and even if I make it brighter right now, I can push it back into a direction where it's not as bright later on. I can um, use a, a darker pencil and push it in the other direction a little bit. Okay, let's see what that's looking like. I can look at the smaller images of it to judge it a little bit. Let's see how I'm doing on it. So it looks... Well, it looks better than it did, but it looks like uh, looks like there's a little bit of hmm. There's an edge that I'm missing over here, right there, and then and then one over here as well, where there's some brighter areas coming into this orbital area. 
I want to make sure I depict and I don't lose so that's gonna look a little funny at the moment I'm fine with that but I need some kind of road map here to indicate to me there's a separation right here this goes off in this direction and then comes down over here there we go that's good and then sort of tapers right over here that's my interpretation everyone interprets reality differently and that's what's interesting about art um, our perception some can change but the way we interpret things uh, sometimes won't change or will take a long time to change and I'm okay with that um, doesn't bother me that somebody may interpret something differently than what I do but what I would tell you is if you're new to art if you're new to drawing in particular that look around at what an artist if you're wanting a mentor and you're talking to someone who's going to help you with your art look at what they've been able to accomplish and if they're able to explain what they accomplish and what they do what they create then that may be the mentor for you um, because you don't want to learn from someone who's creating something that you're not interested in or creating um, art that you know is not something that is not your end goal not not depicting uh, art the way that you want to and they may, I mean they may try to be able to help you uh, and they can probably help in some ways but the better thing to do I think is to find someone who's creating art the way that you want your art to look or at least um, the way that um, you think you want the direction you want to go in and learn from that person or that mentor ask them for help once in a while and um, most artists are very um, accommodating and generous and they'll help you and they'll talk to you I remember emailing a lot of artists a long time ago and asking them for help and I really wasn't asking for help. I was just, well, yeah, I was. I was asking for help. And uh, I was telling them what my challenges were and what I was trying to do, what I was trying to create. And and then asking if they had any, I would ask about materials, obviously, but I would ask if they also had any advice uh, on how to learn and what they recommended and things like that. And I, I don't know why I was shocked, but I, I was really shocked at how generous some of them were and how, how um, forthcoming they were with information and with uh, some instruction and what to do. And I don't know. It, it was, I don't know why I was surprised by that. I, I just was. It was just brand new to me, I guess. Um, but that's my encouragement to you if you're new. Is just reach out to artists that you admire and and they'll probably answer you back Carol you are on top of it I tell you what <laughs> she sent me the scan already she said good awesome that was fast so you scanned it and sent it or maybe you've already had it scanned I don't know that's cool thank you appreciate that So I'm excited. I don't, I don't know how many of you are out here right now who uh, or watching this later are inside the Sharpened Artist Academy, but uh, for all of the students who uh, purchased within the, the fourth quarter, um, you know, just recently, December and, and um, that area right there that 
the Black Friday sale, the end of the year sale, all of those things. We had a flood of new students recently. Um, I've got I've got something I'm so excited to, to share with you guys, something free and a little gift for you. Uh, but I'll be emailing you soon about that. But it's exciting. Uh, free for you guys. And uh, I'm excited to share it with you. Okay, let me look at this again. See how that's doing. Eh, I'm looking at the values, you know. I'm concerned about the values, not the color, again, at the moment. Color, I can always shift. Values, I can shift, too. But sometimes I, I just want to concern myself with one, one thing at a time, you know. You can overwhelm yourself if you try to focus on too many things at one time. Shape and value and color and all of that, it, it can get a little overwhelming from time to time. Okay, that looks better. I don't know if Nick is still out here or not, but but uh, Nick, I was going to ask him if he is still out here, what what he's going to do next on the Lux archival paper. I love the portrait that he did. Um, I was hoping maybe he'd do another portrait. I don't know. I'm kind of partial to portraits myself. Well, Harry, thanks for joining. Good to see you out here. Okay, brighter up here, brighter over here. And if you're somebody who has trouble seeing uh, the values, which I think those are very, very important uh, to be able to see, but if you're, if you're having trouble seeing them, and I, I'm someone who really struggled with seeing values um, very early on when I was first learning, uh, sometimes I still have trouble with seeing values, um, the best thing for me was I put it into a photo editor, put my reference in there, and then I would uh, create a black and white out of it. And then I even went beyond that, and I would do a posterized version of it. And then you can separate how many different values you want within the posterized version. And... And that was that was um, very helpful. You know, I could separate it into four, maybe six uh, different values, and man, I could see a lot after that, and that really increased my ability to then depict what I was what I was looking at. Um, it was it was just a big help to me to uh, look at it in that way to boil it down to just a few values. That's what I was doing. Uh, not making, you know, making it less complicated is really what that was. Oh, Carol, so you're going to have trouble getting uh, the paper over there in the UK. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm guessing that we're talking about the Lux archival paper. So I'm sorry to hear that, but hopefully it'll be available soon. I hope so. For you. Okay. Darker over here. Now, ah, let's see. I want to be careful about just making something darker. I want to make sure that it uh, has some curve and dimension when I do. That little crease, that little crease in the uh, upper eyelid, I think is a very tricky thing. Uh, and I don't have it quite right yet for, for what I want to do. Because the reason why I say it's tricky is if you're not careful, it'll look just like a line. 
And I don't want it to look like a line. I want it to look like a fold in the skin, right? Because that's what it is. And so I want to dedicate a shadow or a curve uh, coming in one direction or the other. So what I'm saying is that the light is traveling and it will be brighter in one spot and then it will diminish. So if it's brighter up here at the top of the eyelid, then if it's curving and going into uh, a wrinkle or a crease, then it's going to diminish the value of that highlight will be darker, right? And so that's what I want to try to depict. And sometimes whenever you're trying to depict a soft shadow like that, then you, you'll want to go back and forth, dark and light values, um, in order to create that soft transition and not just do it one time and say, okay, that's good, that's it, I've got a dark line there, I'm just going to move along, you know, I don't want to do that because if I make it too dark and I don't curve that light form and I don't think about the way that light travels, then it's not going to look convincing, I don't think. So I'm working so hard on this side. I'm going to have to go to that other side here in a little bit. And I want to think about some of these layers that I put over here and the way that I applied the pencil. Okay, that looks a little bit better. A little more convincing, I think. Uh, and I'm okay even if I create more curve and more uh, dimension in what I'm doing than what I see in the reference. I'm okay with that. It's called Athmat. Here it is spelled out here, Carol, if you can see that. A F. M A T. So that maybe that will help. Um, now this is the blue one, blue and gray. They also make. They also well, that's not it. Westcott. Let me see here. That's another one I've tried, that worked moderately well. I've got a ton of sharpeners um, as. Most of us, I prob probably do. Uh, here it is. I'm going to pull it up. This one. I don't use it very often, as you can tell. I used it once, and uh, it was okay. It just, it was more expensive, this one is. Um, I didn't like it as well. I don't remember why now, uh, exactly. But, I mean, it's it's fine. It did okay. I also have this little guy. This one's by Office World. This one's supposed to take the pencil and just sharpen it automatically. Like pull it down into the sharpener and sharpen it and then exit, you know, push it back out. Uh, and it works some of the time. Like uh, I use one of my collar race here. So it exits the sharpener on its own. I don't know if you guys have seen that. I'm trying to find one of my pencils that isn't sharp. Thank you, Sir Jew Man. Appreciate it. And a happy and artful 2020 to you as well. So here we go. Let me try it now. We'll see if it sharpened. Yeah, pretty well. I mean, it has a very sharp taper 
uh, to it, a very steep, tapered uh, point, which I like a longer point uh, rather than what this creates. But it is kind of fun. It's just a novelty to put your pencil in there, let it sharpen it on its own, and then spit it back out. Just doesn't give me the point that I want. I want that long, long point. Yeah, look, Carol is saying that she found the brand on Amazon, but there's lots of them. Yeah, look for um, look for the one that is uh, blue and gray. That's um, that's the one I recommend. That's the one I like. But I don't know. I've had other. I've had students that tell me that they they prefer that grayish one that I was showing you a moment ago. So. I don't know, maybe maybe you'll like that one better. I'm not sure. It's also in my um materials list, I believe, on my website. I think if you go to probably the about page, you'll see where I've listed materials. Something like that. I think that's right. I think that's where I have it. Okay, let me look at this. I think it's looking closer. Yeah, Nick, do you so you're you're addressing Carol saying that the Lux Archival is only on pre order and it won't be available till mid twenty twenty. Are you saying that do you know is um is it available for pre-order to the UK? If that's the case, then that would be a good a good thing for Carol to know if she can get it right now on pre-order. Thank you for that. Appreciate the comment there, Nick. Okay. Ah, good information there, Nick. Hopefully, Carol, you saw that. Okay. A little bit darker right in there. We go to a dark value right here by the edge, and then it starts lightening up, going in the other direction, because this is the... Uh, the whole edge of this orbital structure right here. And so it recesses quite a bit in this area. And then it um, starts to be, the skin starts to be influenced by the zygomatic right here, by that edge of the orbital bone right in here. And then zygomatic, zygomatic process right over here. So it's going to um, influence how much light is able to be showing on uh, the skin over there. So we can't ever we can't ever forget that. We can't ever get away from the fact that you know this this whole form of the head is subject to the structure, that underlying structure of the bones and the skin and or the muscles, rather, and uh, fat tissue and all those things that are underneath the surface. And if we're thinking about that in the back of our mind while we're drawing, uh, then it helps tremendously, I believe. Okay, there we go. I want to make sure I get a little hint of where those, where that eyebrow is. Might be a little bit too red. 
Yeah, that's a little bit too red. So I want to lighten that up over here, though, just a little bit. Show where the top of that eyebrow is a little bit more. We should probably also mention, uh, Carol, and for anyone else, that if you have any questions at all, um, just go to Aliona Nicholson's website, brushandpencil.com. Look under products, and she probably has all the information there regarding uh, when that paper will be available, how you can order as well. I'm super excited about that paper and the possibilities now uh, with that paper. I was excited when I found out she was developing the paper, but I'm even more excited now that uh, we're able to start using it. Um, that's, that's really cool. all that together using those linear strokes and that needs to be a lot brighter in that area and probably brighten it up a little bit with this ivory but I may need to use white in that area Yeah, that's better, but uh, probably need to use white here a little bit. And after I stop the live stream, I'm probably going to make a trip to the garage and spray this. Because <laughs> the next time that we work on it next week, um, I need a little more tooth on it. I can just tell I'm struggling with not enough tooth at this point which is so odd on this 600 grit. Be glad when I'm done with this one and I can use the Lux Archival for the next one. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. Okay. It's still a little bit a little bit too yellow for me right in there, but that's okay for the moment. And just brush all this together a little bit. This all needs to be brighter in this area anyway. There we go. I'm turning my pencil just slightly as I'm using it. That way I can maintain a point longer when I do that. Get a little bit of dust on there, just a little tiny bit. Can blow that off a little bit. All that dust probably went right into my lungs. <laughs> Might as well continue the theme, right? I've been talking about lung corruption. <laughs> this whole time so get a little more of this brighter area down here and right in here looks like you got a big bruise on this eye right now this eyelid which is okay I can change that later I don't have to worry about it but I can put a little brighter area a little brighter bit of uh, value right in there and push that back brighter over here I 
Uh, somebody asked me why I used uh, the dark paper on this. Um, there's no real reason why I'm using the dark paper. You don't have to. Could have done this um, using the beige paper just as easily. Um, it helps in a few areas, maybe. Maybe the hair might help a little bit in. Maybe the side of the, head, of the face. I don't have to build up as much uh, dark values over there because they're already dark. I'm building in the opposite direction. For me, also, it's a challenge because, and I like challenges, um, because it is um, kind of a, a mind twister to me going in the opposite direction from what I'm normally doing. Normally working from a light value to a dark value on white paper, right? And so when I'm working in the opposite direction, dark paper working towards light values, it's, it's a real challenge. We never challenge ourselves and we never experiment and switch up techniques, methods, and, and um, our approach, uh, then I think we might get bored, or at least I think I might get bored. And I might, I don't know, I, I don't want my interest uh, to wane and to, um, you know, start um, losing my interest in what I'm doing. Um, and that, yeah, that, that's what I know about my personality. That would happen a little bit <laughs> if I didn't constantly switch things up. Because I, I don't know, I just, uh, you may call that a character flaw. Uh, and that's fine, but that's just something I know about me. I like to, I like to switch things up. I don't like to get formulaic. I don't like to uh, get so predictable about everything that I do. Um, with my art and with probably a lot of other things as well. There are certain things I don't like to change. But with creating, um, I think the artwork itself, the end result, the end product, um, is what I'm more concerned about. Uh, the technique is always subordinate to the composition or the end result. I can switch the technique, I can switch materials, I can switch a lot of things. Um, the end result and the principles of drawing stay the same. Um, those goals stay the same. I should put it that way. The discipline of drawing stays the same, right? And recognizing um, values and perception and being able to look at it and render it the way that I want, depict it the way that I want. Um, those things, I'm constantly practicing that, trying to get better at that, you know. Don't always hit it, but I'm trying, and trying to do better at it with every drawing. Sometimes it's more of a challenge than it is with others. Yeah, good point, Nick. That's exactly right. Nick said um, that I find that when I get bored rendering art, I tend to get sloppy. That's exactly right. And um, another thing, I remember this was uh, something that an artist I really admire, look up to a lot. I'm trying to remember. I have trouble with his name. His, I believe his name is, um, well, his last name is Mersman. Um Mersman. Mersman. So I'll butcher his first name. I cannot remember for the life of me what his first name is at the moment. Anyway, graphite artist mostly. Uh, he was artist in residence at the Drawing Center down here in Cincinnati uh, for, I, th I believe it was the year 2018, I believe. Anyway, he told me, I, I asked him, I said, so you were able to draw just like all day long. You didn't worry about anything else. You did, he didn't do marketing. He didn't do, you know, uh, well, I'm, maybe he did marketing, maybe very little, though. But he was able to focus just on drawing, becoming better at, you know, the discipline of drawing. Um, and I said, what did you learn through doing that for 12 months? I said, how, how long did you draw? And he said, sometimes I drew like, what was it, 14, 16 hours a day. 
something like that. And I said, what did you learn from that? What, what was the takeaway? What is the biggest takeaway? And he said, I learned how to not take shortcuts. <laughs> not take shortcuts. He said, I learned how to focus and not take shortcuts. And he, yes, that's his name, Carol. Thank you. And, uh, uh, yeah, Armin Mersman. I don't know why I can't remember that first name for whatever reason. Anyway, um, brilliant, brilliant guy. Very humble, um, extremely talented, you know, very skilled at what he does. And, uh, can learn a lot from people like that. But anyway, uh, he, but he also talked about, you know, uh, and along with that idea, I'm not sure how much of this he said, but we had a, a long discussion. But there was something about, you know, just talking about, um, and, and you know of bloggers, I think. We probably all know of people that write or something like that, uh, where because it's Monday or because it's Friday or something like that, they have to put a blog out, you know. Maybe me with my podcast. I gotta put a podcast out. It's Monday, you know that kind of thing. Um, are are we really when we do something like that? Are we really focused on uh, value every time? You know, and, and we should be obviously. But I, I'm just saying that if if you think of everything as a schedule, then what what do you um, what do you sacrifice when you do that? Probably some quality, right? So, I don't know. It, it was it was a profound thought for me, anyway, if you can't tell. I'm very affected by simple ideas, apparently. <laughs> but anyway, I thought it was a profound thought coming from him. Uh, experiencing that and then asking him what that takeaway was. I, I thought it was... It was interesting. I, I don't know what I was expecting, really, I guess, but I thought maybe it was going to be something different. Um, and um, he was going to reveal some holy grail of of drawing that I had never thought of. <laughs> I don't know. But I just thought that was interesting. He said, I learned how to not take shortcuts. I was like, how not to? It just goes uh, totally in the other direction from you know what I guess I thought maybe he would say I mean could you imagine him saying and I can I could imagine him saying I learned how to take shortcuts that helped or that were meaningful or something you know but he learned how to not do that I don't know okay I'll get off that <laughs> I just thought it was pretty fascinating yeah the more I look at this and the more I look at it over there on the screen I do need to spray it. I may use powder blender too to get a softer transition here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I there's some areas I really like how we've I've got a softer transition, but then there's some areas like up in the forehead that is a little bit of a struggle. After I spray it, I'll I'll know a little bit more about what what the paper will take and not take. Um, hmm, I don't know. I don't have enough layers on it, though. I have not worked on this drawing very much. Trying to just do it all um, in real time on a live stream rather than, you know, go behind the curtain and draw on it when you're not able to watch. I want to be able to, to show you exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I know some of you have written to me and told me you're interested in that, so I wanted to see if I could just you know, do that for you out here. Okay. Something that I'm still not liking, not quite the way I want it. Over there in the eye, it's probably this needs to move up just a little bit. That bottom, I'm going to do that, I think, and then we'll be done today. This area needs to come up just a little bit, it looks like, to me. 
So I've got to go back and forth with lighter and darker values. I've got ivory in my hand, which is a lighter value. Let's just use that. I'll be okay, okay doing that. I'm not going to get worked up about which lighter value it is I've got in my hand. doesn't really matter at this point. Okay, but it's not even light enough. Because I want it to be a little bit brighter right there than what it is. There we go. That might work. I might need to use my white, though, instead. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Blow that away. I got a little bit of dust there. There we go. Okay, I'll use this Derwent Chinese white right here, just a little, just to establish that little edge right there. Okay. Come back in this direction with this very, very light blue. And move that over here a little bit, and right in here. If I use it one place, I'm going to use it a few others. I don't want to isolate this one value in just one spot. Okay, that looks all right. And move this back over here in this direction. I'm constantly looking over here at my reference. Now that can be a little bit darker too. So I was using Sienna. I'm going to switch over to Ruby Earth and make that value just a little bit darker. And sort of wrap that around in the way that the light is hitting that portion of the the eyelid, that bottom eyelid. That's the way I believe it's uh, hitting it. Like Kind of like that. Let me look at that. Yeah, now that could be a little bit brighter over here. I want to lighten up my pressure. Very, very light pressure especially as I move into that yellowish area that I created earlier, because I'm going to move all of that into more of a red tone over there eventually, using very, very light pressure, though, over here, just to establish a little bit of that lighter value again right in here. I may have gone too light over here. That's okay. Push this back just a little bit. Now, somebody may be thinking, well, why does he constantly use a light value and then a dark value? A light value and a dark, pushing it back and forth, back and forth. Um, to me, you can't, I can't get um, the, right, the right look and the right shift in uh, the way that, that that value works with showing the light form on uh, that dimension, that portion of the features. I can't get it to look right if I don't push it back and forth in a dark and then a light direction, that kind of thing, um, unless I do it the way that, I've, that I'm doing it right now. And I'm using light values and dark values. Now there's some, there's some really small creases in the skin right there that I think it's probably not too early to show. I can show those right now. I don't want to exaggerate them. I don't want them to be more pronounced than what they really are. 
but I do want to put them in here. There we go. I'm just suggesting them a little bit. I don't want them to be dark. I don't want them to be overpowering. I don't want her to look older than what she is. I want her to look like a young teenager. There we go. A little bit of light right over here for some reason. Make sure I get that in there. There's actually a little bit of light over here as well. And then obviously right there. You can always put more of a lighter value right there at that corner. Um, if my reference is showing me that there's a little pronouncement right in there of that orbital structure like we talked about earlier. And I, th I think I see that right there. So I can put that in. And then it pushes all those other values in a darker direction whenever I lighten that up. There we go. Okay. And that's probably a little bit too dark. Or too light, rather. And so I can push that down. You know, I'm working on mid-values. Mid-values depict realism more than the stark contrast of dark and light, you know. If I have very, very dark values and very, very light values, that's fine. Uh, a value range, though, is what I'm after, and so I'm after uh, the nuances in those mid-values. That's going to depict realism more than just making sure I have dark values and light values. Okay, probably probably enough for the moment. Yeah, I think I've done this, lo this live stream longer than I have most of my other live streams. I'm afraid I'm not going to get this done until June of uh, 2020 if I don't hasten along here and work on it a little bit more. So hopefully you're watching the replay and you're speeding it up. That would be recommended um, because otherwise it just takes a long time. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop with that. I'm fairly satisfied with how much we got accomplished today. Thanks for hanging out and thanks for coming over here and watching. And your comments are so great and questions as well. So I will talk to you soon. Have a great day. And I guess this is the last live stream video and whatever else you want to call it um of the decade from sharpened artists so with that i guess i just want to say um good luck to you in the new year and uh, i hope it's a prosperous one a happy one and in the new decade here i hope that you know you've got some new art goals that you want to accomplish and i'm going to be your biggest cheerleader in this new new year and this new decade. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Stay sharp. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Carol. Bye, everybody.